Walls with radiuses as tight as four feet can be achieved by making saw cuts on the compression side of the panel. A sliding saw with a cut depth control is most effective. Flex track is used on the bottom of the first course of panels to hold the curve in the wall. First, lay a continuous inside and outside toe plate using the flex track. Next, cut vertical grooves into the foam with a circular saw on the compression side of the panel. Experiment a little to determine the correct depth and number of cuts for the desired radius. Consult the product manual for detailed instructions. Assemble the panels and ties every 8 inches or less to form the required radius. Spray foam each horizontal panel seam to make the radius rigid and to reduce bracing requirements. Offset the panel on each course the same as straight walls. When you reach the required height, you'll have to brace the radius more frequently than straight walls. Consult a quadlock technical representative for details on cut depth, spacing and bracing requirements. Commercial contractors prefer quadlock because of its ability to form construction elements like columns, pilasters and lentils, which may contain large amounts of reinforcing bark. These complex elements prevent the placement of other preformed style ICF products. By combining regular ties, extender ties and metal corner brackets, enclosures for columns and pilasters can be easily formed, even with rebar cages already placed. Determine the called out size of the column and select the regular tie that when attached to the 12 inch extender tie will form the appropriate cavity size measured perpendicular to the original wall. These ties are best cut into single ties before assembly and placement. Cut panels to form the column dimensions making sure that the sides lap over the outside panels as shown and lap inside the wall panels. Place inside and outside corner brackets so that the entire top dimension of the column is covered by metal brackets. Place combination ties across the dimension that is perpendicular to the wall, threading the individual tie through rebar. Insert flanges into every other slot on the outside panel. Be sure that there are flanges as close to the corners as possible. Because accepted standards for concrete placement discourage excessive fall of concrete during the pour, tall walls should be constructed in maximum 10-foot increments. Check with the project engineer for specifications on placement of cold joints. Most commercial grade wall bracing systems have brackets available that will allow the extension of the vertical bracing member for the first 10 foot section. Leave the first level bracing in place and extend upwards into your next pour with the extension bracket. Extra long lateral turnbuckle braces are also available to allow fine adjustments on taller walls. Ask your supplier about scaffolding attachments that may be available. The lightweight nature of the quadlock system makes it ideal for the simultaneous monolithic pour of the footings and wall. A monolithic pour is used for two reasons. One, it eliminates the need for multiple trips of the pumping equipment and secondly, it eliminates the cold joint between the footing and wall. Use two by materials for footing forms and at least 50% more stakes than normal. If the wall is higher than four feet, Make the footing extra wide to allow pouring from each side between the walls and footing forms. Before the first grade is set, cut rot resistant 1x4 spreaders and attach them to the 2 by footing forms at maximum 3 foot intervals. Set the footing forms to grade and secure into place with stakes. Strike the building line on top of the 1x4 spreaders with a chalk line. Now fasten the metal track to the 1x4 spreaders using the chalk line as a guide with screws through the metal track. A self-tapping screw works best. 
Cut wooden spacers to set the inside track and fasten to the 1x4 spreaders. In this particular case, pre-cutting the panels was required to match the footing elevation. Brace the wall as you normally would by screwing bracing to the ties. On walls four feet and under, fill the footing from the top of the wall. On walls higher than four feet, fill the footing first from the sides, pouring through the gap left between the quad lock panels and the footing forms. Space the arrival of concrete trucks to allow a few extra minutes of set time for the footings before pouring the walls. When the footings begin to set, continue the pour in the walls.